equals to a of sinus alpha x over alpha x, it will be also one. So one important thing that you have the argument of your of your function sinus and the denominator of your fraction they have to be have to be identical you see uh is it clear eric yes it's clear for me for you clear very good Valentina, on ya. Yes, Mikael. Sir. It's clear. So, so you see, Mikael, for example, Mikael, uh, what I say now, you have to believe me. You have to believe me and uh, and check uh, your lectures. But we will use the formula 3.1 and 3.2. 3.1, 3.2 in our next exercise. So, oh, pardon, excuse me. So, uh, the first and the simplest, in the simplest case of, of the application of the previous result of the first remarkable limit, uh, we have to find the limit as x goes to zero of sinus alpha x over x. Here alpha is a real number, is a real number. You see? So in this case, in this case, from the previous formula 3.2, we have that our alpha of x is alpha times x. You see? So the simplest case of our function alpha of x. Then in order in order to have uh, in order to represent our limit in the framework of the formula 3.2, we have to rearrange our denominator. You see in the denominator, we have not alpha of x, but simply x. So if I multiply, if I multiply the denominator and the numerator of my, of my fraction by alpha, I will have sinus alpha of x, where alpha of x is alpha multiplied by x and in the denominator I have alpha of x. So alpha is a constant and by this formula 3.2 we have that this limit will be exactly alpha. Agree? Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Agree. No yes. problem. Valentina, clear? So, yes, it's clear. Clear. Thank you. So, we pass to another exercise, which is maybe more difficult, but really, really. It's the same thing if you want. So we have to find the limit as x goes to zero. In the numerator, we have cosinus, cosinus of 3x minus cosinus of 7x divided by x squared. In this case, as in the first remarkable limit, we have the, the an undeterminate form zero over zero. Why? Because if x goes to zero, cosine of 3x is one, cosine of 7x is also 
1. So in the numerator, we have 1 minus 1. This is 0. And the denominator x square is 0 as x goes to 0. So we have to rearrange our, our fraction. To this end, for you, for you, uh, we make use of the formula 3.3. .3. So the difference of two cosine functions, you have that it will be minus two sinus of a plus b over two multiplied times sinus a minus b over two. And in our case, we have that a is 3x and b is 7x. You see, I want to, I want to rearrange my numerator. So cosinus 3x minus cosinus 7x. What do we have? From this formula, taking into account that a minus b, a minus b is negative, we will have, we will have uh, the following formula. So it will be 2 multiplied by sinus x, sinus 5x over x multiplied by sinus 2x over x because x squared is x times x. And then, then you see in this, in this product, I want to use, I want to use my theorem, my corollary 3.2. So I want to pass I want to pass to alpha of x, a con which is in this case a constant multiplied by x. So I write, you see the first term, I write as 5 sinus 5x over 5x. So the same thing if you want. Agree? Yes, I agree. So same thing for the second for the second term. I write sinus two x over x as two multiplied by sinus two x over two x. Then our corollary says that the limit of sinus 5x over 5x is 1, sinus 2x over 2x is also 1. Then, if I take the limit as x goes to 0 of my initial fraction, you see here I have 2 multiplied by 5, multiplied by 2. So the limit will be 20. Agree? Yeah, I agree. Agree. Valentina, are you agree? Yes, I am. Michael, agreeing. Michael, Michael, Robinson, Michael, I agree. Yes, yes, I'm yes. agreeing with you. Thank you. Where is Onya? Yes, Onya. I agree. Agree. Thank you very much. Good. Yeah. Now, now, another, another, another limit 
uh, where we can use the first remarkable limit is the following limit. Do you know this function arc tangent? Yeah. So yes, I think we know. The, it. You see, in the English literature, uh, people usually write this function as tangent to the power minus one. So the inverse function. The inverse function to the function tangent of x. But in Russian literature, uh, we write we write this function as arc tangent of x. So if you if you take some Russian books or if you take or some English American books you will see there is a little difference in the notation. But here we have no problem because because uh, for the moment we don't know an important thing like an equivalent function to the arc down of x. Uh, do you know from your lectures what is the equivalent function? Eric, do you know this? The equivalent function of arc tangent? Yes. You see, I we will not use this, but uh, this way is, if you want, rather complicated. But due to our knowledge of this, of our topic, of our subject, I cannot use the equivalent function. But you have to know, it's a remark that as x goes to zero, this function arctangent of x is equivalent to x. Equivalent, this means that if I take the limit arctangent of x over x, this will be, this will be one. So in fact, in fact, in this exercise, we want to we want to find we want to find an equivalent function for our function arc tangent you see so it's a remark you can forget about now but it is where it will be very useful in our future in our future work so this remark you you have to, it is it is it will be good to try to imagine that uh, some functions as for example as x goes to zero have uh, some equivalent functions which are not so difficult so to find the limit it is better if we use some equivalent functions so for the moment it is only a remark now how to work with this limit eric is it clear what i want to say yes for me it's clear you're trying to say that to make us understand a little bit better we want to use a different uh equation yes, it, it is you see it is better but we do not know for the moment uh, how to define a, an equivalent function and so on. So we work hardly with the exercises like this. And you have to know also how to work with this because uh, it is not uh, it is not possible in some for some situation 
how to find an equivalent function. But at least you have to know how to find the limit if we do not know the term, the, uh, the term equivalent function. So in this case, let us we introduce a new variable. Y is, is arc tangent of X. Then you see if if X goes to zero, then Y can you imagine uh, the graph of this function arc tangent? Who knows? You can you can check uh, or you can see this function on the web. You see, no problems. So you will see that if x goes to zero, your y also goes to zero. So in this case, in this case, our limit arc tangent of x over x will be y over tangent of y. Agree? Valentina? Yeah, agree. Agree. Thank you. So, as for, as for the denominator of this fraction, you see the function tangent of y is sine s y over cosine s y. So I rewrite, I rewrite my fraction in the following way. In the following way. I you agree with this? So the only thing we rearrange our fractions. We write tan y as sine s y over cosine s y, and then we have the following fraction. Mm -hmm. Agree? Yes, I agree. Yes. I, it makes sense. Yes. Agree. Thank you. So, so, as for, excuse me, as for the limit of the numerator, we know, you see that the limit as y goes to zero of cosine as y will be one. And as for the denominator of our fraction, we have the limit, the limit of sinus y over y. So the limit of the numerator exists and equals to one. The limit of the denominator exists and equals one. The limit of the denominator exists and equals one due to the first remarkable limit. Here, no problem. So our limit theorem says that, in fact, we have the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. And the the answer in our for our exercise is one. I agree. Maybe you have some question. No, I, I agree. It makes sense for Onya, est-ce que c'est clair? Merci beaucoup. So Next exercise. 
You see something maybe maybe more difficult, but in this case, in this case, we make use also of the first remarkable limit. So first of all, first of all, we have we have a product of cotton jump of two x and cotton jump of pi over four minus x. And we want to find the limit as x goes to pi over four. So by the definition of cotangent of 2x, we have that it will be cosine of 2x divided by the sine of 2x. And you see, as x goes to pi over 4, this cotangent goes to 0. Yes? By the definition yes, of all of the function cotangent. Yes? So, same thing. If you want, if you want, it's the same thing by the definition of the cotangent, but the argument is more complicated, pi over 4 minus x, as x goes to pi over 4. So, in this case, you see the numerator will be cosine of 0, which goes to 1, and the denominator will be sine of 0, which goes to 0. So, our cotangent goes to infinity. Agree? Yes. So, in this case, we will make use of the change of the variable. So we take we take a very natural in this case change of the variables. Uh, we take y as pi over four minus x. We take this because we want we want to use to use our first remarkable limit. So if x goes to pi over four, our y goes to zero. Uh, agree? Yes. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yes. Then, then, then you see. I write my limit, I write my limit, the initial one, and due to this change of variables, I rewrite this limit, but when y goes to zero, cotangent of pi over two minus two y, and here it will be simply cotangent of y. So as for as for as for the first term in this product cotangent of pi over two minus two y, I write by this definition that it will be cosine of pi over two minus two y over sine y over 2 minus 2y. So, if you make use of the cosine and sine of the sum or of the difference, you will see that S4, S4, this term, this term, it will be sine of 2y. You can check it. It will be good if you can check. And in the same way, you see that sinus of pi over 2 minus 2y is cosinus of 2y. Then, then 
in fact, you see from from this limit, from this limit, you will have the following one. So sine s two y multiplied by cosine s y over cosine s two y sine s y. So I rewrite, I rewrite this this fraction in the following way as a product, as a product of sine s two y over sine s y and cosine s y over cosine s two y. For the moment, I hope we have no problem. So let us consider. Let us consider the. You see, in order to apply our limit theorem, we have to say if I have the limit as y goes to something, in this case goes to zero, then I have to have that each term of my product has a limit. And then in this case, the limit of the product will be the product of the limit. Agree? Yes, I agree. Agree. So as for as for the first term, we have that we have something like sine s to y and sine s y. As y goes to zero, we have an indeterminate form like zero over zero. Agree? Yes, I agree. Yes. So, so you see, in this case, in this case, I rewrite my my fraction in order. You see, the idea. The idea is to use our our first remarkable limit or the corollary from this first limit, first remarkable limit. So. S4, S4, sine S2, Y. I write that it will be sine S2, Y over 2Y. And as for sine S, Y, I write that it will be Y over sine S, Y. But if we compare, if we compare the fraction, on the, uh, on the left hand side. And this fraction, you see, we have to multiply these products, this product by two. Agree? Yes, I see it. You see. Oh, yeah. Est-ce que c'est clair? Oh, yeah. Flipping. Oh, yeah. Agree? Est-ce que c'est clair? Bon. So, if is it clear, then you have, then you have that this limit will be 2 multiplied by sine s 2y over 2y and the limit of y over sine s y. Then the first limit, the first limit, this one, will be 1, and the second limit will be also 1. So the whole, the whole limit, this one, will be 2. Mikael, Robinson, are you agree? Yes. Thank you. So, from the other hand, you see, we have also we have also the limit of cosine s y over cosine s two y. In this case, you see, we have no problems because because the limit of the numerator is one. The limit of the denominator is one. 
So the whole limit will be one. Now, now, if you want the initial limit as x goes to pi over 4 of this product of two cotangent will be equal to the limit as y goes to 0 of this, pro of this product. And now we know that the limit of this product is 2. So the final result is that our initial limit is 2. Agree? I agree. Agree? Yes, yes. Good. Thank you. So now, next, the next, the next limit is, you know this, I hope you know this, at least from our seminars. As for the sequences, as for the sequences, we have, we have the following result. If I take the limit as n, where n is a natural number, 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is e. Here you have, here you have some decimals of your number e. It is an, an irrational number. So now, if you want, we can, we can generalize our result for, for the sequences to the case of to the functional case. So what we have is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the power x is also e. You see an important remark. In this case, we do not, in this formula, excuse me, we do not precise the behavior of our x, because in this case, x, maybe, 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 x goes to plus infinity or minus infinity. So I write infinity without any sign. Do you know this from your lectures? Yes, the last class we looked at. So, uh, I think that it will be good to discuss with you the proof of this result, because I think it is important. It is important. And you will have uh, the notes, the slides, which will be useful for your examinations, maybe. So the first case, you see, I, I suppose, we suppose, that x goes to plus infinity. Then if you take any real x, then this x is between between the integer part of this x which is called now n and the integer part of x plus one which will be n plus one and uh, here here i write that the integer part of a real number x in this case is the part which appears before before the decimal. You know this, yes? Yes, yes, I think we know it. Yes, good. So, if you have the formula 3.6, then 1 over x 
is less than or equal to n, yes, from this part of the inequality 3.6, yes, and from the other hand, 1 over x is greater than 1 over n plus 1 from this part of the inequality 3.6. Now, in this inequality, in this double inequality, you have a double inequality. You see, I add 1 to all the uh, to all the terms of my inequality. So 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over uh, 1 plus 1 over x less than 1 plus 1 over n. Agree? Is it clear? Yes. It is just we we just add 1, nothing else. So, from the other hand, we consider this inequality. Each term of this inequality is greater than 1, because all the terms are in this inequality are positive, like 1 over x, because x goes to plus infinity, so x is positive, n is a natural number, positive, so, all the terms in this inequality are greater than 1. So, using, using 3.6, namely, if I take x, which is greater than, then I will have the left inequality. And if I know that my x is less than n plus 1, I will have the second inequality. I agree. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Clear. Yes, it's clear. Good. Good. Onya, yes, it's clear. Oui, it's clear. So now you see from this inequality, it is uh, an exercise of this lemma. It is to recall you uh, the squeeze theorem or the theorem of two policemen. So, first of all, I want to find I want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n plus one to the power n. So if I if I take that one plus one over n plus one to the power n is exactly one plus one over n plus 1 to the power n plus 1 as in the definition of our number e divided evidently by 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 then the limit of the numerator will be e and the limit of the denominator will be 1 so the limit of this term is e. Agree? Yes, yes, I agree. Yes. Agree. So, same thing for the term 1 plus 1 over n to the power n plus 1. Here, we represent this term, this term, as a product as a product of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n and 1 plus 1 over n. So in this case, we also have e. Then, you see this inequality. By the squeeze, 
theorem or the theorem of two policemen, we have that the limit, the limit of one plus one over x to the power x if x goes to in plus infinity, yes, will be will be e. So the first case of our formula 3.5 is verified. Agree? Yeah, I agree. Very good. So the second case, the second case. You see, it is possible that x goes to minus infinity. In this case, we make use as in some previous exercises, the change of variables. So we set we set x equals minus t. Then it is clear that uh, in this case t goes to plus infinity. So the idea the idea here is to use the first case of our proof. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Good. So I write, you see, I write the limit as x goes to minus infinity of this of this guy one plus one over x to the power x, but x in contrast to the previous case in contrast to the previous case goes to minus infinity so using using my new variable t i can write that it will be t goes to plus infinity but of what of one plus one over minus t it was x to the power minus t. Then we we see that it will be one minus one over t to the power minus t. Then then here it is not good. You see uh, we can forget about this about this term because here you can you cannot see uh, you cannot see the power. So it will be t over t minus 1 to the power t. You see the difference, the difference. Here we had t minus 1 over t to the power minus t. Yes. And then we have t over t minus 1 to the power t. Is this clear? Is it clear? Yes. Yes, Anya. Oui, c'est clair. C'est clair. Merci beaucoup. So we have we have a limit as t o of t over t minus one to the power t as t goes to plus infinity. So in fact, we rearrange our numerator. We rewrite our numerator as a sum t minus one plus one. Same thing divided by t minus one. In this case, you see, I have something in in the brackets like one plus one over t minus one and to the power t then then you see in order to use in order to use the first case of my lemma i rewrite i rewrite this guy as a product of something to the power t minus 1 because you see the second term 
is 1 over t minus 1. So I want, I want to have the power exactly t minus 1. So in order to have this term, I have to multiply, to multiply the limit by the limit of 1 plus 1 over t minus 1. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Good. So, as for the first limit, it will be A. And the second one, as T goes to plus infinity, it is evidently that it will be 1. So, in the case, when x goes to minus infinity, it will be also e. So the lemma, the lemma, as for the second remarkable limit or the formula 3.5, is proved. Questions? No questions. Oh. Maybe you have some question. I understand everything. Eric, uh, stay clear. Mikael, is, is it clear? This is clear. Good. So, the corollary of this result, which is rather useful, rather useful in our work. You see, <clears throat> here in this formula 3.5, we have x goes to, for example, 2 plus infinity. So you have 1 plus something small, but which is, for example, as x goes to plus infinity, which is positive. But the power x is very big, x goes to infinity. So the corollary in this case is as follows. You see, if I take, instead of my x, which goes to infinity, some x, which goes to zero, then in this case, I will also have one, plus something small and the power the power will be will be very very big so this corollary says that in this case also the limit will be e is it clear yes it makes sense yes, yes. so only the changing of variables. You see, nothing special. I I can say that it will be not x, but y. I I change one over x by y, then y goes to zero, and uh, something in the brackets will be one plus y, and uh, then the power will be 1 over y. Nothing special. Now, how we, how we can use uh, our second remarkable limit? The first case, uh, the first case maybe is the case for Valentina. It was her question. So, let us try to find to find the limit as x goes to infinity and here we have one plus k over x to the power x where k is a real number you see as usually we try to use we try to use some some known result some known result 
In our case, it's the second remarkable limit. So I want, I want to rewrite my, my limit, this one, in terms of a new variable. I introduce a new variable, which is t, and t is defined as k, uh, k over x. Then if x to x goes to infinity, then t goes to zero. Then I will have that my initial limit will be the limit as t goes to zero of one plus t to the power k over t. I think it is clear. Only the change of variable. We replace our x by t. Yes? Eric. Yeah. Yes, everything's clear. Yes. So now, you see here, here, uh, there is a trick if you want, because we have not discussed, we have not discussed uh, the continuous function. You see, mm, if you want, if you have that you know this from your lectures, but uh, maybe I want to underline that that is, if you have a continuous function f of x, and you want to find the limit as x goes to zero, x zero of f of x, where your function f is continuous then the limit as x goes to x0 of f of x is f of the limit as x goes to x0 of x, that is f of x0. Do you know this from the definition, from the definition of a continuous function? Eric, do you know this? Mm, I think I've seen it before, yes. So you see what what we see here, this slide. You see, I write, I can write that one plus t to the power k over t is is one plus t to the power one plus t and all this to the power k but as this function as this function is continuous so the function i say a to the power x is continuous is a continuous function then you see i have my limit inside of this function inside of this function this limit i know this limit it will be e by the definition of if you want by the corollary where is it by this corollary so i know this I know this. And then I can find it, and the final limit is e to the power k. Is it clear? Because I, I have to say more about the properties of your functions here. And these properties we have not discussed in our seminars. So if you have 
Hmm? Yes, for me, everything is clear. It makes sense that this is the... the Michael, the Michael, is. Michael, is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Valentina, is it clear? Yes, it is clear. Really? If you have some questions, I'm here for you. Yeah, it's clear for me. Onya, Onya, est-ce que c'est clair? Oui, c'est -ce clair. C'est clair. Très bien. On y va. So, the next exercise, the next exercise is the following. So, we want to find the following limit. X plus 1 over 2X plus 1 to the power X. And X, X, goes here. Uh, I have to write that x goes to plus infinity in order to underline that x goes to plus infinity. Excuse me, it's a misprint. So first of all, let's try to let's try to find the limit of the fraction x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 as x goes to plus infinity. As x goes to the plus infinity. You see, it is not a very difficult exercise and we have that this limit will be 1 over 2. Agree? Yes, I agree. Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, you see, if it is 1 over 2, then, in fact, the limit we want to find here or here is something like 1 over 2 to the power plus infinity. And if I want, I want to recall you. The result discussed already during our seminars. If we take the limit of Q to the power n, where Q is, for example, it is positive between 0 and 1 and goes to infinity, then the limit will be 0. Do you remember this result? It was uh, the previous seminar, seminar four, I think. Yes, I think I remember it. So, you see, in this case, no problems, no second remarkable limit, but only our observation about uh, the behavior of some sequences of real numbers. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's clear. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's clear. Next, a next, a next exercise is the following. So, you see, I want to find I want to find the limit a where, where a is a positive real number to the power x minus 1 over x. So you see, as x goes to 0, then a to the power x goes to 1. Agree? For example, a is 2, 2 to the power x as x goes to 0. It will be 1, yes or no? Here we go. Yes. yes. Clear. Clear. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Very good. So, you see, in this case, in order, in order to use 
our previous results, you see we consider not the fraction a to the power x minus 1 over x, but x over x over a to the power x minus 1. So 1 over the fraction defined in the formula 3.10. Okay? It's the method which like uh, which is like this. Mm -hmm. Agree? No, <laughs> you are not agree, but I propose you this method. So, first of all, you see if I if I take the logarithm of a of x, then it will be x. Agree? Yes, I agree. Agree. So now, uh, I do not touch the denominator of my fraction, but I rewrite my log to base a of a to the power x in the following way. So I add 1 and I take minus 1. Mm -hmm. It will be the same thing. Agree? Yes. So now, so now, you see, if, if I hope you know the properties of this logarithmic function, so it will be, it will be log of this bracket to the power 1 over a to the power x minus 1. So here we have a term which will be the power of the argument of my logarithmic function. Agree? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Mikhail, is clear. Is it clear? Valentina, clear. Yes, it's clear. Oh, really clear, Valentina. If you have questions, no problem. We will discuss this. Onya, is it clear? Excuse the clear. Yes, it's clear. Oui, clear. Clear. Now, now you see that in this representation we have a to the power x minus one, and here in the power we have also a to the power x minus one. So it is very natural. It is very natural to introduce a new variable t, which is a, a to the power x minus 1. And here, you see, we know that the limit of a to the power x minus 1 is 0 if, if x goes to 0. Agree? I agree. Yes, I agree. I agree. So now, so now, what do we have? We have that our fraction, our limit, excuse me, as x goes to zero of this fraction, x over a to the power x minus one, is the limit of this sophisticated of the sophisticated form but in terms of our new variable t it will be t goes to zero of log 
to the power a of this term one plus t to the power one over t. So as in the previous in, in the previous exercise, this function log log is a continuous function. So I change the uh, the symbol for this function log and the symbol of the limit. You see, I write that the limit of log will be log of the limit. It is the property of of continuous function. We will we will see it uh, next Friday. But now uh, I hope you know this from your lectures, and uh, at least you have to believe me. Agree? Yes. Agree. Yes. Yes. Good. So, from this corollary, we know that this limit in the bracket will be E. So, the, fin uh, the final result here for this fraction, not for the initial one, but for this fraction, will be log to the, bar, to the base A of E. So, the formula 3.11. Now, you see, in fact, our, our limit was a to the power x minus 1 over x. So, here we return, here we return to our initial fraction. For our, to our initial fraction. We can write that this limit is the limit of 1 over x over a to a to the power x minus one. So it is exactly the limit started before. You see? And we know that this limit, this limit is not zero. So we can use our limit theorem and we can write that it will be one over the limit, which is known which is known from 3.11 clear yes good good so you see from from 3.11 3.12 we have that our desired limit a to the power x minus one over x is one over log two base a of e. So from the from a rather well known formula, you have to know this formula that if I take b equals e, then I can write that log to the base a of b is 1 over log to the base b of a. So if I take b equals e, I will have 1 over log a. So in this case, in this case, we have that our desired limit is exactly log of a that is the logarithm to the base e is it clear or no yes so you see maybe maybe you do not like the notation here here maybe i am in the russian notation so here I write that we have log to the base A of something. And if I write the logarithmic function as Ln, 
this means that I have my function log, but with respect, but to the base E, you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Agree? Est-ce que c'est -ce est vraiment, vraiment clair? C'est compliqué, mais c'est clair. C'est compliqué, mais c'est clair. <rire> alors, alors, tu vois, cette formule-là, tu peux le trouver n'importe où. Mm -hmm. Et après, et après, tu vois, ce que j'ai écrit ici, ce que B est, est égal à E. Mm -hmm. après, après, tu mets ce B dans, dans la formule comme ça et tu obtiens ça. Tu mm -hmm. obtiens ça, tout simplement. C'est-à-dire, la chose la plus importante et cette formule-là. Donc après, tu peux, tu peux utiliser euh, le fait que ton B est, est égal à E. C'est tout. Mm -hmm. Et c'est clair. Uh, oui, c'est clair. Guys, excuse me, uh, I speak French, so, you see, uh, if you want, I will repeat in English. Eric, Is it clear or if it is, it is necessary to repeat in English? I think we can repeat it one more time in English just to make sure 100% that we all understand. So, 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 you see the basic formula here. I will not prove this formula, but if you want, if you want, it is possible next time. But in this formula, you see, The only thing which is important is that in this formula, B is E. You see, you have, you have log to the base A of E. You take B equals E. Then, then, you will have that log to the base A of E is 1 to the log to the base E uh, we denote this logarithmic function as ln usually in the Russian literature you see but if you want I can write that it will be log to the base E of A same thing Question of notation. Agree? Yes, I agree. Mikael, is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Valentina, is it clear? Where is Hussein? Is it clear for him? Hussein. Are you here? Okay. So now, this, this, this uh, exercise is completed. So now, we will, we will discuss another limit. I don't know. Maybe you do not know what is the hyperbolic sinus of x. Do you know the definition of this function? Eric, do you know? Sinus hyperbolic, hyperbolic sinus, hyperbolic sinus. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. So, you see, Here I, I make use of some notation, the hyperbolic sinus of x. You see? So by the definition, by the definition, here in 
14. You have that this hyperbolic sinus of x is e to the power x minus e to the power minus x over 2. It is exactly the definition of this function. Okay? Nothing, nothing else. The definition of the function hyperbolic sinus of x is as follows. The first formula in 3.14. Uh, same thing as for the cosinus, the hyperbolic cosinus, which is the sum of e to the power x and e to the power minus x over 2. So only, only the definition. You have to know this because you will see this function in your future work. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. So nothing, nothing, nothing else that the definition for the moment. You see, you you can try to find, you can try to find the graph of this function sinus, if hyperbolic sinus, and you can also find the graph of this hyperbolic cosinus on the web. So the main thing for you, if if we are discussing this formula 3.13, we will find we will find an equivalent function for this function hyperbolic sinus at the point zero. You see, this is the sense of this formula 3.13 okay so we are we are we have our definition nothing else so if i want to find the limit as this hyperbolic si hyperbolic sinus of x over x then i make use of this definition of my function so I write, it will be e to the power x minus e to the power minus x over 2x. Clear? Yes, clear. Clear. Now, you see, now, I return to our previous exercise. In this previous exercise, you see, in the numerator, I have some a positive to the power x minus 1. So we can, we can take, we can take in this formula a equals e. No problem. We will have the same result. Yes? We, shall, we will have the same result. Agree? So, a limit. So now, I want to use this result here in this exercise. So, I rewrite my numerator, e to the power x minus e to the power minus x, as a sum of e to, to the power x minus 1 minus e to the power minus x minus 1. Same thing. Agree? Yes, that makes sense. Yes. So, one half is in front of the limit. So, we have two terms. e to the power x minus 1 over x. And the second term is e to the power minus x minus 1 over minus x. So this minus, this minus in the numerator will be here in the denominator. Agree?
Yes, I agree. Good. So you see, they refer, they refer to the previous result. To the previous result, we want to find the limit if a is equal to e of of this function. Excuse me, of this function. You see, we know, we know that this limit will be the logarithm to the bar to the base e of e. That is, this limit is one. I agree. Is it clear? Oh, I have to repeat. No, for me, it's clear. Mikael, clear? Yes, it's clear. Quarantina, is it clear? Well, Onya, is it clear? Yes, it's clear. We say clear. It's clear. Yeah. Uh, so, we have, we have, you see, we have two terms. The first one, we know the limit of the first one, and now we have to find the limit for the second one. So, in this case, in this case, you see, it is the natural change of variables. I, <clears throat> I set t equals minus x. Then, my second limit will be the limit as t goes to zero e to the power t minus one over t so as in the formula 3.16 this limit will be also one agree yes yeah. So finally, finally, we are looking for the limit sinus hyperbolic hyperbolic sinus of x over x. Then you see we have one half multiplied by the sum of the limits. We know these two limits one plus one. Then finally, the desired limit will be one. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. So now we have a break because because we have a break, and then we will continue our work. Okay. Okay. See you in ten okay. minutes.